The series begins by showing a big tournament happening in China. It's all about this super popular game called Glory. So, Glory is one of those online games where you team up with others to fight battles. In this tournament, there are some top-notch esports teams taking part. There's Excellent Ara, they're the ones in red uniforms. Then there's Blue Rain in blue uniforms, Tiny Herbs rocking the green and Tarrant, who also goes with red. Now in this match, Ara going up against Tiny Herbs. Each team has six players in total. Five of them are the main players, and they've got one substitute player just in case. Now, let's dive into the scene with Yuki, the captain of the excellent Ara team. He's the one who's been leading them to win the glory competition for three years in a row. Interestingly, Yuki always wears a mask during matches to keep his identity a secret from the public. As the match kicked off, Yuki showed off his impressive skills in the game. He led his team against Tiny Herbs and messed up their formation. Meanwhile, Su Mu Chung, a female player from Excellent Ara, had the important job of keeping the opposing captain busy. When Tiny Herbs started feeling the heat, they decided to use a tactic. They intentionally ran away, leaving their healer players behind. At that time, Yuki sensed something fishy and told his team to stay alert. However, one of his impatient teammates fell for the enemy's trap and launched an attack. That impatience cost Excellent Ara dearly, as they were quickly surrounded by the Tiny Herbs team and suffered a loss. Now, Yuki and his team had to keep playing the 4 vs 5 match. Feeling confident, one of the Tiny Herbs marksmen aimed for Yuki, but Su Mu Chun quickly shot that player down. Excellent Ara had used the same strategy earlier in the game. In the final minutes, Yuki and his team managed to take down the enemy tank player, securing a 4-3 victory for Excellent Ara. As usual, Yuki didn't show up for press conferences or other events. It's not just skill that matters in the esports business, cause players need to be charismatic too. However, this didn't sit well with the president commissioner of Excellent Ara, because Yuki's reluctance to appear in public was affecting the team's financial gains. The main commissioner, who's also an investor in the team, naturally wanted to make a profit. So, the chief commissioner instructed Toe, the director of the excellent Ara team, to find someone more marketable than Yuki. Long story short, Tao met with Yuki and introduced a potential replacement named Soon Xiang. Soon Xiang was a rising star in the game Glory, very talented, but lacking experience. Surprisingly, he was quite arrogant when facing Yuki. At first, Tao asked Yuki to mentor Soon Xiang and eventually replace him as the team captain. But Yuki couldn't stand Soon Xiang's arrogance, so he decided to end his contract with excellent Ara and retire immediately. He even handed over his Glory game account, which he had maintained for a decade. After leaving the excellent Ara dormitory, Yuki reminisced about his time there. Feeling aimless and hungry, he ended up at a supermarket and coincidentally ran into Su Mu Chung. They bumped into each other and went shopping together. However, when it was time for Su Mu Chung to return to the dormitory, Yuki chose not to go with her. He informed Su Mu Chung about his resignation. At first, Su Mu Chung wanted to accompany Yuki, but he insisted that they should go their separate ways this time. Su Mu Chung looked quite sad because she, Yuki, and her older brother Mu Qiu had been friends since childhood. The three of them started playing the glory game together a decade ago and were the founding players of the excellent Ara team, which had become one of the oldest teams in glory. They had crossed paths with Tao, who was now their manager at a cyber cafe. With no clear goal in mind, Yuki headed to a nearby cyber cave close to her dorm. There, she created a fresh game account and gave it the name Lord Grimm. There, Yuki meet many newbies in the game, which brought back memories of her own beginnings when she started playing Glory a decade ago. In the game, Yuki got her hands on Mu Q's unique weapon, a non-class item with the special ability to use skills from any class. However, this weapon could only be wielded by a non-class player. In Glory, once players reached level 20, they could choose a specialized class like Assassin, Marksman, Warrior Tank, or Healer to acquire class-specific skills. Most players couldn't wait to pick their dream job, but this time, Yuki had a different plan. 
He wanted to remain a non-classed player to use Mu Q's weapon, the Myriad Manifestation Umbrella, which allowed him to access basic skills from all classes. Meanwhile, the boss of the Cyber Cafe, a person named Gugu and a fan of Yuki, was also playing Glory. It seemed like she wasn't skilled at the game. Yuki noticed this and tried to help her, but she had no idea that the player assisting her was actually Yuki, her idol, as he always wore a mask when he played on stage. Then Yuki scrolled through job listings and stumbled upon a job opening at Gugu Cyber Cafe, owned by Gugu. He had a clever plan that he'd apply for the job using his twin brother's name, Yusho, to keep his identity as a pro player in the game Glory a secret. During the interview, Gugu was surprised to learn that Yuki had zero work experience. However, she had seen Yuki's incredible gaming skills in Glory, so she decided to hire him. She also provided him with a new place to live, quite different from his previous residence at the excellent Ara Dormitory. The next day, Yuki began his work at the Cyber Cafe, but things didn't go smoothly. He made mistakes and ended up working without receiving any pay. Meanwhile, a journalist named Mengmium, who was a fan of Yuki and also covered esports, tried to get information about Yuki's departure from Excellent Era, the team he had been with for 10 years. Unfortunately, he was denied entry by the security officers at the dormitory. In the end, Ming Mian decided to visit Gugu Cyber Cafe, named Happy, which happened to be across from the excellent Ara dormitory. Ming Mian started playing the game Glory and, by chance, encountered Lord Grimm, the in-game persona of Yuki. However, Yuki sensed that Ming Mian had ulterior motives and wanted to keep the loot for himself. So, he decided to wait until all of their teammates had been defeated. After his teammates fell, Yuki showed his incredible skills by defeating the level's boss all by himself. This impressive feat made Lord Grimm a renowned name in the Glory game server, and Yuki began to slowly increase his character's level. A while later, the excellent Ara team held a press conference to address the sudden departure of their captain, Yuki. This change had left Sun Xiang feeling down, because he had the challenging task of taking over from Yuki, a legendary player in the game Glory. The very next day, Yuki came back to the game to hunt monsters with Ming Mian. However, this time, Yuki took the lead. At first, Ming Mian had thought about letting Yuki meet an early death in the game, but using Lord Grimm's account, Yuki managed to single-handedly defeat the level boss. What Yuki didn't know was that Gu Gu had been watching his game, and it actually made her happy. Later in the evening, one of Gugu's close friends from out of town, a pianist named Little Tung, arrived at the Happy Cyber Cafe. Little Tung was a competitive soul, always fixated on winning or losing, even if it meant going through a costly journey of self-improvement. Upon her arrival, Little Tung tried to persuade Gugu into resuming her studies. However, Gugu wasn't too keen on the idea and instead chose to play the game Glory. She even jokingly blamed Yuki for enticing her into playing, even though he had just started working there the day before. Upon hearing this, Little Tom used Gugu's account to challenge Yuki to a one-on-one -on -one match in the Glory game. When the battle kicked off, Yuki decided to play it safe and dodged most of the attacks while Little Tongue aggressively challenged him. To her surprise, Yuki easily defeated her using just a few moves. Little Tongue, curious about his skills, kept challenging Yuki late into the night, but the results still the same. Eventually, she made the decision to stay at Cyber Cafe Happy and create her own glory account. Meanwhile, over at the Blue Rain team headquarters, the team's captain and guild leader were in deep discussion. Blue Rain was facing a membership crisis as their guild was steadily losing members. The guild leader came up with a plan to recruit Lord Grimm to attract new players to join the Blue Rain guild. When Yuki received an invitation from the Blue Rain Guild, he saw an opportunity to benefit from the guild's resources to level up his account. Long story short, Yuki became a member of the Blue Rain Guild and helped them set a new raid record, earning valuable materials as rewards for the players. During the raid, Yuki stunned everyone by defeating the level boss all by himself. After accomplishing the mission and claiming the rewards, Yuki left the Blue Rain Guild. On the other hand, Little Tongue is just finished her first mission in the Glory game. 
At the same time, Mu Qing is still hanging out in excellent era, and she's practicing with Sun Xiang. But here's the thing, Sun Xiang's way of leading seems pretty tough on her, and she's missing Yuki, who used to be the captain of excellent era. A little while later, there's a big showdown between three major guilds. Blue Rain, Tiny Herbs, and Tarrant were trying to take down a boss monster. But as they're arguing about who should go first, out of nowhere, this mysterious player shows up and jumps right into the boss fight. This player looks super skilled because he's one of Yuki's students, goes by the name Bao Zi. And not too long after, Yuki himself shows up to help out Bao Zi. Meanwhile, the three big guilds are still going back and forth about who's up next. So when the boss monster's health gets low, Bao Zi and Yuki decide to step back, giving the three guilds a chance to get some free hits. But when a boss monster's health gets low, it usually goes berserk and gets crazy strong. So when the three guilds finally go in, the boss monster goes berserk and starts blasting anyone in its path. Sadly, the players from those guilds were a bit too slow to react. And, well, they all end up getting wiped out. Bao Zi and Yuki only step out afterward to finish their mission. After seeing Yuki's mad skills, Gu Gu suggests that he become Little Tongue's mentor in the glory game. By the way, when Gu Gu asks Little Tongue to be friends in the game, Little Tongue always says no because she's just naturally stubborn like that. Yuki, despite being constantly challenged by Gu Gu, decided to create a simple guidebook for Little Tongue. The next day, Little Tongue read the guidebook and faced off against Hu Gu. Surprisingly, Gu Gu couldn't stand a chance this time. Impressed by Little Tongue's progress, Gu Gu secretly tried to study the guidebook Yuki had given him. However, when he opened it, he found only vague and confusing drawings. Surprisingly, Little Tongue was able to decipher Yuki's sketches and accepted a friend request from him. Meanwhile, Blue Rain's guild leader, still smarting from his previous encounter with Yuki, asked for Yuki's help once again to set a new record in defeating boss monsters. Yuki took this opportunity to practice teamwork with Little Tongue and Bao Zi. With the help of Munching, who had created a new account in disguise, they smoothly set a new boss monster defeating record. Their successive record breaking, caught the attention of excellent Era Guild and Tao immediately instructed their core team to break Lord Grimm's record. At that time, Sun Xiong and his team easily surpassed Lord Grimm and Blue Rain's previous record with a comfortable lead. Upon seeing this, Blue Rain's guild leader informed Lord Grimm, also known as Yuki. He had doubts about surpassing excellent Era's new record, as it seemed nearly impossible. However, Yuki welcomed challenges and assured him that she'd find a way to beat excellent Ara's team record. The following day, Yuki started experimenting with various attack strategies to defeat the monster more efficiently. He also realized that he needed a skilled swordsman to help with this. Sometime later, Sun Xiong, now the team captain of excellent Ara, had his first match. This time, excellent Ara was up against Team Blue Rain. There, Sun Xian managed to prove himself as a great player, showing that he could compete with Yuki. In a one-on-one -on -one battle, Sun Xian could win three rounds in a row by himself. What's interesting is that it was all part of Team Blue Rain's captain, Wen Zhao's plan. He's one of the top tactical minds in the glory game. They sent some less skilled players in the one-on-one -on -one rounds to make Sun Xian overconfident. Then, with great teamwork, Captain Blue Rain had an expert swordsman named Shou Fun face Sun Xiang in the team versus team round. Shou Fun was a talkative player, and his job was to get under Sun Xiang's skin. While Sun Xiang was busy dealing with Shou Fun, Team Blue Rain wiped out all the other members of Team Excellent Ara. After that, they managed to take down Sun Xiang, who was left all alone. A little while later, Shou Fun secretly visited the Happy Cyber Cafe. It turns out Shou Fun was a student of Yuki, when he was at Blue Rain Academy. He came to the cafe because he was curious about why Yuki had suddenly quit. Besides that, Shofun wanted to answer Yuki's call for help in beating excellent Ara's record. Then they started working on breaking the record, but they were just a few seconds short of excellent Ara's new record time. Shortly after, Yuki figured out a faster method. Instead of killing the monster, they could toss it off a cliff. With this strategy, 
they finally managed to beat excellent Ara's record. After coming back to Blue Rain headquarters, Shofun's actions in helping Lord Grimm, also known as Yuki, with the mission were discovered by Wen Zhao, even though Shofun had used a fake account. There, Shofun was questioned about what he had been up to all day. Eventually, he revealed that Lord Grimm was Yuki and that he planned to return to the glory competition soon. Upon hearing this, Wen Shou ordered Shofun to copy Yuki's myriad manifestation umbrella weapon for study. After that, Shofun rushed to Cyber Cafe Happy and brought Yuki to meet Wen Zhao. Surprisingly, Wen Zhao had also been one of Yuki's students. Wen Zhao then challenged Lord Grimm to see his myriad manifestation umbrella in action. Unexpectedly, the match ended with Lord Grimm, or Yuki, being defeated. Afterward, Yuki and team leader Blue Rain shared a laugh and reminisced about old times. Meanwhile, over at the Tiny Herbs team, there was a player named Yi Fungar. He was part of the Tiny Herbs professional team, which was known for being in last place and rarely competing. Then, Team Tiny Herbs captain Lin Jie heard about a new player named Lord Grimm, who had gained recent fame. Lin Jie thought about sending his team members, including Yi Fungar, to face Lord Grimm as a practice exercise. Long story short, Lin Jie gathered all the team members, including Yi Fungar, to have a player killing PK match with Lord Grimm. PK means player killing, which is a term in the glory game for eliminating other players, causing them to lose some of their experience levels and lowering their character levels. Unfortunately, Yi Fung Art didn't have a computer, so he had to play from the warehouse. While in the game, all the Tiny Herbs team members tried to attack Lord Grimm, but they were defeated by Lord Grimm with the help of Little Tongue and Bao Zi. However, Yuki was actually impressed by Yi Fung Art's playing style when he tried to attack him. Back at Tiny Herbs, Lin Jie gathered everyone and told them they were going up against the famous player, Glory Yuki. Lin Jie seemed to already know who Lord Grimm was just by watching him play. Sadly, Yi Fung Art didn't improve, so he had to go back to the training academy. It was tough for him to leave his team and friends behind. When he got back, Yi Fung Art's mentor praised his efforts, but the competition among pro players was fierce, so he couldn't rejoin Tiny Herbs. Feeling stuck at the academy, Yi Fung Art reached out to Lord Grimm for guidance. At that moment, Lord Grimm recognized Yi Fung Art's potential in battle strategy, even though he couldn't finish off enemies. There, Yuki emphasized that Yi Fung Art's skills were like those of a captain and could help his team win. Meanwhile, Lin Jie tried to contact Yuki because he was still active in the glory game. He invited Yuki to help coach the Tiny Herbs players. Hearing that, Yuki agreed and also suggested that Little Tongue become a training opponent for the Tiny Herbs team, which would help him improve too. The next day, Bao Zi ran into Cao Fang while they were both on the street. They got to know each other and realized they were both playing glory. Bao Zi then invited Yi Feng are to come to Cyber Cafe Happy. That's when Yuki, Little Tongue, Bao Zi, and Yi Feng are all met for the first time. But they didn't know that Yuki used to be the famous captain of the excellent Ara team, except for Xiao Feng. During a serious chat between Yi Feng Ar and Yuki, Yuki noticed Yi Feng Ar's special talent and it was understanding what was happening with their team. Yuki suggested that Yi Feng Ar switch from being an assassin to a support or healer player. At first, Yi Feng Ar was unsure because he wanted to use all his skills and get the best results in the glory game but he realized that Tiny Herbs already had support players on their team. Meanwhile, in the world of glory, Yuki, Little Tongue, and Bao Zi were shopping for equipment in the city. But as they left the city, the excellent Era guild attacked them. Soon Xiong was upset because Lord Grimm had surpassed his records. When they were cornered by the excellent Era guild, Yi Feng Ar appeared with her new account and chose to be a support player. Surprisingly, Yi Feng or was able to coordinate well with Yuki and the others right away, without needing much practice. After a tough battle, the excellent Ra guild attacking them eventually retreated. Yi Feng Ar felt satisfied, as if he had found his new path as a pro player in his new support role. Meanwhile, Meng Ming was worried because the guilds were struggling, 
with the big guilds fighting over boss records. Her guild was down to just 30 members, and was at risk of disbanding. Theb, Mame Meum, decided to ask Lord Grimm for help in defeating boss monsters. She offered to pay for Yuki's services, even with his own rare equipment. Yuki, however, only asked for her spear, which was also quite valuable, as payment for his help, and he intended to give it to Little Tongue. Meanwhile, at Cyber Cafe Happy, there was a glory player who always booked a special VIP room to study and analyze every aspect of the glory game in great detail, especially focusing on Lord Grimm. On the other hand, a group of important guild leaders were having a meeting to discuss Lord Grimm's services, which they found to be very demanding. Lord Grimm was always ready to help any guild, but he asked for rare items or equipment in return. This led to a kind of competition among the guilds, each trying to outbid the others to get Yuki's assistance. However, they soon realized that the one benefiting the most was Yuki himself, so they gathered their best players to target Lord Grimm and his team. In the game, they quickly launched an attack on Lord Grimm before his team could come together. Surprisingly, all members of Lord Grimm's team, except for Little Tongue, skillfully avoid the attacks from the Big Guild Alliance. It turned out that at that moment, Little Tongue was busy reading a cooking recipe, causing her in-game character to die and losing the new weapon Yuki had given her. On the other side, Yuki, with Shofun's help, decided to split up to deal with the enemy. Surprisingly, Shofun could take on multiple opponents at once, but during the fight, his weapon broke. So, he went after one of the enemies who had a similar role to him to grab a new weapon. After that, he joined forces with Lord Grimm, and together, they easily defeated all the enemies. Meanwhile, Bao Zi, who was trying to escape, accidentally fell into an old well. To his surprise, he met another player named Lu Ji, who played as a summoner. It turns out that Lu Ji was a player who often rented a VIP room at Cyber City Happy. He knew Bao Zi well because they both set records with Lord Grimm, who is actually Yu Qi. When the enemy found out where they were, both Bao Zi and Lu Ji had to make a quick escape. Meanwhile, Muching and Yi Feng are, using their secondary accounts, were underestimated by the enemy. Little did their opponents know that Muching and Yi Feng are were very experienced players. With great teamwork, they were able to defeat their enemies with ease. On the flip side, Little Tongue had just respawned in the city within the game. Yuki asked her to wait there, but she was feeling very confident and wanted to take on two teams at once. Surprisingly, Little Tongue managed to defeat both teams, and they regrouped on a hill, facing dozens of enemies who had also respawned. As their health began to drop, Yuki and his team decided to retreat. However, Little Tongue insisted on getting her weapon back, which had been taken by the excellent Era guild leader. Hearing this, Yuki asked his team if they were willing to help Little Tongue, and they all eagerly agreed. Then, a battle broke out between Lord Grimm's team and the Alliance teams from the six major guilds. With Lu Ji's assistance, Yuki and his team managed to defeat all of their opponents, leaving only one player standing, and it was the guild leader of Excellent Ara, the one who had taken Little Tongue's weapon. There, Yuki intentionally let Little Tongue have a one on one duel with the guild leader from Excellent Ara. Despite having fewer weapons, Little Tongue easily defeated him and reclaimed her confiscated weapon. After this incident, the guild leader from Excellent Ara, who had led the attack on Lord Grimm, felt very disheartened. He was blamed for the defeat, which caused the characters of their best players to drop in level. The next day, Lu Ji, a brilliant summoner, became a strategist and joined Lord Grimm's team. They celebrated their victory by having a meal together. Seeing how close they were, Yuki decided it was time to officially form the Lord Grimm team and get back into the glory competition. A little later, Excellent Ara held a press conference to announce Yuki's retirement. Tao, the manager of Excellent Ara, tried to soothe the fans' anger due to the team's continuous losses since Yuki left. Tao explained that Yuki had retired by his own choice, and they had no option but to support his decision. Gu Guo, a fan, felt lost and found it hard to believe Tao's statement. She realized she might never meet her idol again. On the other side, the Tyrant Guild decided to join in the attack Lord Grimm. 
but even with just her bare hands, Yuki managed to defeat several members of the Tyrant Guild. Eventually, Yuki faced the deputy captain of Team Tyrant, and it turned out they already knew each other. Soon after, the deputy captain challenged Yuki to a bet in a team match. If Lord Grimm's team lost, Yuki would no longer be allowed to do the raid missions. However, this was a problem because raid missions were important for finding items to upgrade his weapons. With no other choice, Yuki had to accept the challenge and win the match. Meanwhile, the deputy captain of the Tyrant team, who knew that Lord Grimm was actually Yuki, reported this to Captain Hund Wangqin, a veteran glory player who had been in the game for 10 years, just like Yuki. Turns out, Han Wangqin and Yuki had been rivals for a long time. Unlike Yuki, Han Wangqin played with a brawler character, known for aggressive gameplay. Upon hearing this, Han Wangqin decided to join Tyrant's match against Lord Grimm's team. Back at Cyber Cafe Happy, Yuki, who had to win, borrowed a VIP room to explain his tactics to his team. They were up against the Tyrant team, known for their high damage and aggressive style of play. In the match, the Tyrant team not only had high damage, but also had skilled healer players. Whenever Yuki's team tried to reduce the Tyrant team's HP, their healer quickly healed them, restoring their HP. At that time, Yuki's team was puzzled by the Tyrant team's healer. However, Yuki had a plan to isolate one of the Tyrant team members to prevent them from being healed. Then, when Yuki and her team were feeling confident, Wang King suddenly appeared and released his ultimate skill, defeating Bao Zi, Shou Fun, and Little Tongue. He then faced off against Lord Grimm. At that time, Wang King was curious about whether Yuki had left Excellent Ara voluntarily or had been expelled. Yuki didn't answer this question and only mentioned her plans to return to the glory competition in the near future. In the end, Wang King and the Tyrant team managed to defeat Lord Grimm. Later on, Yuki, having lost the bet, could no longer participate in boss monster raids. Then he came up with a different way to gather materials for his weapons by selling strategy guides created by Lu Ji in exchange for rare materials. On the other hand, Little Tongue couldn't forget her last match against Tyrant and realized that Yuki was indeed an extraordinary person. The next day, during an interview, Wang King announced to the press that Yuki hadn't given up and would make a comeback in the glory tournament soon. This inspired Gu Gu to support Yuki even more. There, Gu Go thought that Yuki might return to excellent Ara and booked tickets to watch a star match, where junior players would challenge senior players in one-on-one -on -one matches. Meanwhile, Muching, who was with Yuki, also invited him to the star competition event and gave him three tickets. On another note, tickets for the match were already sold out, so Gu Go couldn't get one. Fortunately, Yuki kindly gave her one ticket. In the morning, Yuki, Little Tongue, and Gu Gu headed to the competition venue. When they arrived, Gu Gu set up a booth to meet with Yuki. However, representatives from the excellent Ara team scolded Gu Gu, telling her that Yuki's glory days were over and he no longer played the game. They even made Gu Gu clean up the booth. Gu Gu felt really down, but Yuki encouraged and advised her. Eventually, she realized that what she had admired about Yuki all this time was his spirit, the ability to achieve the impossible. Meanwhile, Xiao Fan secretly registered as a challenger in the star competition to showcase his current skills to Lin Jia. Before the matches began, Mochen came to Yuki and pretended to be a member of the audience. When Gu Gu saw Muching, she was quite surprised. At that time, the event featured the participation of six major teams, and the first match would be between two players from the Tiny Herbs team. The challenging player was a mage or wizard, who would be facing off against Lin Jia. During the match, the player named Lin Jia put a lot of pressure on his captain, making the captain hide instead of fighting. Lin Jia, on the other hand, kept attacking and didn't give his teammates a chance to fight back. He even burned down the forest area to force his teammate to come out of hiding. The player mage had no choice but to face his captain openly. However, it turns out that this match was planned by Lin Jia. In the final attack, he intentionally let his teammate win to boost the teammate's confidence, with the idea of making him the captain in the future. 
In the second match, another player from the Tiny Herbs team, Yi Fungar, wanted to prove herself by playing as a support player. He was going up against the captain of the little-known Void team, who was already known as the best support player in the Glory League. Support players play differently from other roles, because they're not as strong in one-on-one -on -one fights. They rely on manipulating the arena as much as possible. The captain of the Void team had the upper hand and attacked Yi Feng or quickly, not giving him a chance to catch his breath. When Yi Feng are trying to counter raw attack, it turned out to be a trick by the Void team's captain to dominate the match. In the end, he lost the match and was upset when reporters asked him questions. After Yi Feng are left the arena, Yuki approached him and expressed concern about Yi Feng R's behavior. There, Yuki pointed out that if Yi Feng R was willing to learn and seek advice, he would be happy to help. However, Yi Feng R started showing off his skills in front of Yuki and ended up losing. This attitude didn't sit well with Yuki. In the next match, Sun Xiang challenged Tyrant's Wonking. When the match began, Wonking couldn't focus because he was thinking about Yuki returning to the glory competition. This distraction allowed Sun Xiang to gain the upper hand. However, the arrogant Sun Xiang commented that Wonking was old and should retire, just like Yuki. This comment deeply offended Wonking, and he decided to show his true abilities as a senior player, ultimately defeating Sun Xiang. When journalists asked Sun Xiang about the match, he was upset because he was constantly compared to Yuki. The next match is a battle between regular spectators and professional players. Out of the many spectators, one lucky person gets chosen to compete against a player from a top academy team. Surprisingly, the chosen spectator is Little Tung, and she's up against a student from the excellent Ara team. When Little Tung steps up, everyone is shocked to see that her account is brand new and less than a month old. However, once the match begins, the academy players find themselves struggling against Little Tung's skills. Seeing their team about to be defeated by this newcomer, Sun Xian quietly takes the place of one of his teammates. There, Yuki also notices a big difference in the playing style and realizes that Sun Xian has replaced the opposing player. Then Yuki secretly switches in for Little Tung to face off against Sun Xian. At that time, the match gets really intense with both players eventually using their most powerful moves. In the end, Sun Xiang loses. When they review the match, they see that Yuki altered the direction of her attack to dodge Sun Xiang's strike, which was his signature move from his days as a pro player. There, Yuki relives the joy of victory, just like when he was a pro player after winning the duel. Meanwhile, reporters who witnessed Yuki's signature moves rush to find Little Tung, but she's already gone. On the other hand, Gu Guo, who runs the Cyber Cafe, finally realizes that Yuki, her idol player, is none other than the Yuki who works there. Meanwhile, the actions taken by Yuki were praised by the leaders of the major teams. Back at the hotel, Gu Guo had plans to meet Yuki, but decided against it because she felt embarrassed. Sometime later, Yuki, Gu Guo, and Little Tongue returned to the Cyber Cafe happy, only to find a bunch of reporters waiting for them. There, Gugu quickly covered Yuki's face with her jacket to keep her identity a secret. However, these journalists were only seeking shelter from the rain and were actually waiting for Teo and Sun Xiang at Cyber Cafe Happy, which happened to be across from the excellent Ara dormitory. News of Yuki's appearance at the All-Star competition eventually reached the commissioner of excellent Ara. When he saw the crowd of reporters at the excellent Ara office, he realized he had made a mistake by replacing Yuki with Sun Xiang. On the other hand, Yuki figured out that her boss had seen through his disguise. So he started wearing a mask to ensure that Meng Mian, a journalist who frequented Cyber Cafe Happy, could recognize him. At that time, Meng Mian attempted to inform Gu Guo that her employee was the famous Yuki, but Gu Gu tried to deny it in order to protect Yuki's disguise. After some time had passed, Tao invited Yuki to the excellent Ara office and asked him to rejoin the excellent Ara team. Tao explained that the decision to recruit Sun Xiang was mainly for publicity. Hearing that, Yuki stressed the importance of teamwork in competition and pointed out that Sun Xiang, who was self-centered, couldn't lead the team effectively. 
Tao responded by saying that in the business world, it's not just about winning but also about capturing public attention. Upon hearing this, Yuki turned down Tao's offer, stating that he already had his own team and intended to return to competitive play. Tao became angry and deleted all the computer memories related to them and Mu Qiu, who had played a significant role in their journey. This made Yuki reminisce about the memories she shared with Mu Qiu and Tao when they first created the Myriad Manifestation Umbrella. Turns out, Yuki and Mu Qiu were big fans of the non-class player characters in the Glory game from the very beginning. However, Tao insisted that they choose a class, so Mu Qiu eventually gave up on making the weapon and reset the Myriad Manifestation Umbrella back to level 1, hiding it in an old game box. To make up for Yuki's disappointment at not creating a weapon, Mu Qiu made a bet with Yuki to see who could become the best player in the Glory game and use the Myriad Manifestation Umbrella. As a result, Yuki has now become one of the top Glory players and has the privilege to use the weapon. While playing, Yuki stumbled upon a book belonging to Mu Qiu on an old computer. In the book, there was a recipe for enhancing the Myriad Manifestation Umbrella. It involved completing a challenging quest to reach the top of the tower, which usually required high-level accounts. Moreover, in this quest, Yuki couldn't be hit by monster attacks. Knowing about this, Yuki decided to climb the tower from outside. At first, Yuki found the quest quite intimidating. Fortunately, when he felt pressured, he gained a new skill that allowed him to fly. Yuki immediately flied to the top of the tower. To his surprise, he was warmly welcomed by his old friends from top teams who couldn't wait to test out his perfected weapon. Sometime later in Cyber City Happy, Gu Gu overheard Yuki's plan to make a comeback in the competition and expressed interest in being part of it. However, after giving it some thought, Gu Gu realized that her gaming skills weren't up to par, so she couldn't be a member of Yuki's team. Instead, she decided to take on the role of the team's manager. She also sought help from Muching to register them in the Challenger League, a lower tier league compared to the main one. To become a professional team and compete in the main league, a team must first secure the top spot in the Challenger League. Nevertheless, forming a championship-worthy team was no easy task, as they had to build a guild and gather members. The following day, Yuki met with Lin Jie to discuss the assessment of Yi Feng R. Lin Jie was also curious about Yuki's new team, so Yuki invited him to check out the condition of Cyber Cafe Happy, which would serve as their future headquarters. At the same time, Yuki convinced Hu Gu to volunteer as their team manager. During this interaction, Lin Jie deliberately stirred Gu Gu's emotions by suggesting that Yuki join Tiny Herbs. Gu Gu officially accepted the role of being Yuki's new team manager. The very next day, she began handling her initial tasks as a manager. First, she created a guild named Everlasting Great Guild. Then she started recruiting members by offering gifts to newcomers who wanted to join their guild. Once they reached their first 300 members, Gu Gu registered the guild to level it up, and they had to complete a mission for it. However, she didn't realize that the mission she received involved defeating a boss monster that seemed nearly impossible to beat for their newly formed guild. Despite the tough challenge, Gugo had already accepted the mission, and they had just two hours to complete it. Failing the mission would mean the guild would be wiped out. With no other options, they began their attack on the boss monster. As expected, their first attempt failed, and Yuki noticed that the guild members' attacks didn't even hit the boss monster. Surprisingly, those guild members were actually masters from big guilds in disguise, trying to sabotage Yuki's plan to create a new team. This failure served as Gu Gu's first lesson in dealing with setbacks. She felt a lot of pressure because she had never before hold such a significant responsibility as an esports team manager. The next day, Lu Ji came up with a plan to defeat the boss monster in the guild mission. Yuki and his team gave it another try within the time limit. Yuki intentionally guided the boss monster to a corner of the cave so that the attacks from the guild members, who were secretly trying to make them fail, would hit the cave wall. This strategy had been thought out by Yuki and Lu Ji. In the final minutes of the game, the continuously hit cave wall finally collapsed and crushed the boss monster, defeating it instantly. 
After their successful mission, Yuki and his team celebrated by having drinks together. Meanwhile, Gugu still felt down because she believed she hadn't been a good manager. However, she told Yuki that he fully supported him in creating a new team, even though she wasn't directly involved. Seeing Gu Gu's sincerity, Yuki informed her that they had won the guild mission quest, and Gu Gu was officially appointed as the guild manager, as long as she changed the guild's name to Guild Happy. After that, Yuki tricked Blue Rain's guild leader into coming to Cyber Cafe Happy to help Gu Gu prepare for the certification exam to become a professional esports team manager. Over time, more members joined the guild. During the New Year holidays, Bao Zi, Little Tung, and Yi Feng are said goodbye to their families. While Yuki was shopping at the mall for New Year celebrations, someone who looked just like him showed up at Cyber Cafe Happy and met Gu Gu. This person was dressed very nicely, which confused Hu Gu. She immediately went to Munching and asked if Yuki had a split personality because she didn't recognize him. Afterward, Munching explained that the man at Cyber Cafe Happy was actually Yuki's twin brother, Yusho. Yusho had come to persuade Yuki to go back home as their father wanted. Surprisingly, Yuki came from a very wealthy family. Soon after, Yuki returned home and at the same time, their new guild needed investors. Yuki also told Gu Gu to trick Yusho into funding their guild. After seeing that Yuki was happy at Cyber Cafe happy and confident in his choice as an esports athlete, Yusho finally came home. He brought his favorite toy from when he was little, a gift from Yuki. Meanwhile, at Excellent Era, Sun Xian kept practicing his best moves after losing in the All-Stars match yesterday. A few days later, Gu Gu passed her certification exam, and then Little Tung, Bao Zi, and Yi Feng are returned from their vacation. They celebrated Gu Gu's success by having a meal together. In the end, Team Happy's players gave their account cards to Gu Gu and made her their manager. Afterward, they went to watch Excellent Ara's match against Thunderclap. Thunderclap relies heavily on their captain, Shi Qin, who is famous as one of the four tactical masters in the glory game. The other team members lack the skills to match their captain's style, which is why their team is ranked so low. On the other hand, Excellent Ara's many losses caused their ranking to drop drastically, landing them second from the bottom. So, this match was super important for both teams because if they lost, one of them might end up in the lower challenger league next season. When Sun Xian noticed that his opponent was near the bottom of the rankings, he tried to show off a new move, the same one Yuki was known for. Sun Xian wanted to prove he could do what Yuki did. However, he forgot that he was up against Shi Qin, one of the four tactical masters of the glory game. When Shi Qin spots an opponent's weakness, he keeps targeting it. In the end, Sun Xian lost to Shi Qin, and Excellent Ara lost the match. This meant they had to move down to the Challenger League next season. This result also angered excellent Ara fans, but only Munching had the courage to step up, apologize to the press and the fans, and face the consequences. On the flip side, the Thunderclap team didn't celebrate their win because Shi Qin suddenly quit. He had been secretly recruited by Teo, who manages the excellent Ara team. Sometime later, Yuki reached out to Munching to cheer her up during a tough time. Yuki invited her to explore a map in the game Glory made by Mu Q. Surprisingly, they ran into a bug in the game, but it turned out that Mu Q had intentionally added it as an Easter egg. Munching also shared with Yuki that she couldn't enjoy playing Glory anymore in Excellent Ara. The next day, Shi Qin joined Excellent Ara, and he and Muching have known each other for a long time. Munching hopes Shi Qin's presence will improve the teamwork especially with Sun Xian, who's known to be selfish. Meanwhile, Team Happy was getting ready to join the Defiance League and met famous esports athletes, including Excellent Ara, which had been demoted. Not long after, Yuki bumped into Shi Qin, and they had a friendly chat since they were old friends. The next day, they prepared for a selection match against one of the top teams to test their skills. Unexpectedly, Team Happy's opponent this time was Team Tiny Herbs. Yi Fengmar, a former team member, knew exactly what Tiny Herb's weaknesses were. He also mentioned that Team Happy would need a skilled healer player to defeat Team Tiny Herb's. 
they quickly put together a list of their top 10 healer players within the guild and selected one who was an expert at removing debuffs. Debuff is a type of offensive skill that weakens the enemy's attacks. For example, if an attack originally dealt 100 damage, a debuff could reduce it to just 40. In simple terms, debuff makes the enemy's attacks less powerful. In the end, they chose a healer player named Wang Yi. However, Wang Yi's main motivation for playing the glory game was to earn money. On the other hand, Shi Qin and the excellent Ara team had their own tactics to perform strongly in the selection match. Back in Team Happy, Yu Qi recognized Yi Feng, Ar's dedication and preparations for the competition. As a result, Yu Qi appointed Yi Feng, Ar as the deputy captain, and asked her to interview Wang Yi. During the salary discussion with Wang Yi, Yu Qi decided to test his abilities. Surprisingly, Wang Yi couldn't perform debuffs, but he had excellent healing skills and was very aware of the game situation. It turned out Wang Yi had used other people's services to rank as a top 10 healer, but Team Happy members were unaware of this. In the end, Wang Yi became the sixth member of Team Happy. To gear up in the game with limited resources, Yu Qi suggested they loot items from players who had died in boss attacks. Then Yu Qi provoked one player to create chaos among multiple guilds so they would attack each other. While they were after a weapon for Wang Yi, an assassin player showed up, trying to do the same. When Yu Qi pursued the assassin, he realized the assassin was skilled, but Yu Qi still won the fight. Meanwhile, the actions of the other Team Happy members were discovered by big guilds, except for Wang Yi, who had been taking the enemy's weapons. This led to Team Happy being surrounded by the guild members. At that time, Yi Feng are felt embarrassed and pressured as deputy captain because his carelessness had led to this situation. This failure made Wang Yi consider leaving the team. However, after talking with Gu Guo, Wang Yi realized the team's unity and their efforts in building Team Happy. Furthermore, Wang Yi finally understood the team's motivation, vision, and mission. Long story short, their match against Tiny Herbs began as planned. In the morning, Yi Feng are disappeared, and the team thought he was feeling down and had run away from the match. Surprisingly, Yi Feng are had actually gone to the match menu early to study Tiny Herbs past matches. While Wang Yi was searching for Yi Feng are, he ran into the guild leader of Excellent Ara, who tried to bribe him with money to play poorly and make Team Happy lose. Wang Yi, who was mainly interested in making money, felt uncertain. Meanwhile, Yu Qi got in touch with Yi Feng Ar and asked him to meet in the game. Yu Qi encouraged him strengthen his determination and overcome her fear. As the match was about to begin, all eyes were on Yu Qi's account, Lord Grimm. In this selection match, Team Happy had to reach a finish line and earn points to qualify, while Tiny Herb's team had to stop them until time ran out. Right at the start of the match, Team Happy was suddenly attacked with various skills that covered a large area, disrupting their formation. Yi Feng are also decided to face the enemy alone while his friends continued their journey. Surprisingly, he came up with a clever way to fend off their former captain by setting a trap among the trees. Meanwhile, the other members of Team Happy had already completed 50% of their journey. However, Little Tongue and Bao Zi were affected by the enemy's poison. When Wang Yi, their healer, saw this, he panicked because he didn't know how to remove the debuff effect. Little Tongue and Bao Zi kept asking Wang Yi to help them remove the debuff because their health points were running low. When Wang Yi attempted to heal them, he was too late as their characters ran out of health points right in front of the finish line. However, Yu Qi didn't blame Wang Yi and encouraged him to keep trying. Wang Yi managed to provide healing at the right time, making it difficult for the enemy to deal with Little Tongue and Bao Zi. In the end, Wang Yi wasn't blamed for their characters' deaths. Instead, he was appreciated for his healing skills. This gave Wang Yi confidence that he had made the right choice by joining the team. With the help of Yu Qi and Yi Feng Ar, Wang Yi made it to the finish line. After the match, Wang Yi decided to open up to Team Happy and admitted that he didn't know how to remove the debuff effect. When Yu Qi heard this, he offered to teach Wang Yi the debuff removal technique if he wanted to stay on the team. Then, they checked the match schedule and saw that their next opponent was the Blue Rain team. 
Shofun also informed Yuki that their captain had devised a tactic and was ready to perform at their best this time. On the other hand, Yuki had also prepared a plan to disrupt the coup Russian between Shofun and Wenzhou. Yuki reached out to an experienced glory veteran named Wu Chen. Wu Chen specialized in playing as a warlock or mage character. At first, Wu Chen claimed that he no longer played glory, but Yuki suspected he was lying. So, they both tried to hack into each other's IP addresses to learn more about their situations. When Yuki visited Wu Chen's headquarters, he met some of Wu Chen's associates. They revealed that they had been paid to eliminate Lord Grimm. Besides that, Yuki discovered a valuable miniature weapon meant for Wu Chen. Meanwhile, Wu Chen had also arrived at Cyber Cafe Happy and met Hu Gu. There he was just as skilled as Yuki when it came to gathering information. However, Gu Gu's response wasn't what Wu Chen had expected, especially when he learned that Team Happy only had six inexperienced members with minimal equipment. Wu Chen had hoped to obtain the location of Lord Grimm, but instead, he received Yuki's signature. Upon returning, Wu Chen got a report from his friends about Lord Grimm's in-game coordinates. Surprisingly, Yuki himself revealed this information when he stopped by his base. Yuki had actually planned to set a trap for Wu Chen and his team. In the game, Wu Chen attacked Yuki, but he pretended to be caught in Wu Chen's trap by using a shadow move. When Yuki found himself surrounded by Wu Chen's associates, Yi Feng Ar came to his rescue from behind. Then, Yuki ordered Yi Feng Ar to battle Wu Chen, who had a habit of talking a lot to provoke his opponents. Unfortunately for Wu Chen, he was defeated by Yi Feng Ar, and they took his high-level weapon. With no other choice, Wu Chen had to meet Yuki at Cyber Cafe Happy. Next, the members of Team Happy worked together to pressure Wu Chen. They pretended that they would take Wu Chen's valuable weapons unless he helped them in the selection match. Eventually, Wu Chen expressed his desire to join Team Happy and challenged all of its members to a competition to climb the tower. In an unexpected turn, Wu Chen purposely lost the match, demonstrating the gap in experience and mindset between them. He used all of Team Happy's members as stepping stones to climb the tower. The next day, match day arrived, and it turned out that Wu Chen was the former captain of Blue Rain. Yuki's plan from the beginning was to defeat the Blue Rain team by recruiting their former senior, Wu Chen. At that time, Shofun was surprised to see Wu Chen because his playing style was heavily influenced by his senior, Wu Chen. When the match began, Yuki gave Wu Chen a low-level stick weapon to face Team Blue Rain. This prevented Wu Chen from actively participating in the battle due to his lower level. Shofun attempted to confront Yuki, but ended up humiliated and trapped between the walls. Meanwhile, Wu Chen became emotional as he was constantly provoked by the enemy. Eventually, Wu Chen, Yi Feng Ar, and Bao Zi easily defeated the enemy's tank players. However, when they were about to reach the finish line, they meet resistance from three opponents. Soon after, Wu Chen started chatting playfully when facing the members of the Blue Rain team. After the rest of Team Happy had crossed the finish line and Wu Chen was left alone, he confronted the current captain of Team Blue Rain. There, Wu Chen recalled their past when they used to spar as seniors and juniors. Wu Chen, who was still active as Blue Rain's captain at the time, had been repeatedly defeated by the current Blue Rain team captain, Wen Zhou. This had a profound impact on Wu Chen, leading to his sudden retirement. He had even making a special weapon to challenge the current Blue Rain captain, but Yuki take over it and replaced it with a low-level staff. Wu Chen and Yuki actually had a heated argument and fight in the game, randomly attacking the walls of buildings. However, it was all part of a clever plan to bring down the building, allowing all five of them to pass to the finish line. Later, Yuki returned Wu Chen's weapon and advised him not to rely too much on his weapon because it could weaken his skills. After experiencing the match atmosphere again and feeling appreciated by Team Happy, Wu Chen decided to return to the professional league and join Team Happy permanently. Afterward, Wu Chen met Wen Zhou and expressed his admiration for Wen Zhao's performance in the professional league. In return, Wen Zhao thanked Wu Chen for taking care of the juniors and being an inspiration, 
which contributed to the success of the Blue Rain team today. After some time, the selection results were announced, and surprisingly, Team Happy passed despite being at the bottom of the rankings. Meanwhile, over at Excellent Era, Sun Xiang became increasingly frustrated when he saw that Team Happy had also made it through. Then he decided to challenge Yuki to a friendly match. After that, Yuki gathered his team for a meeting before the match began. Lu Ji suggested targeting Shi Qin, who had become the core of Excellent Era's current game. They needed someone who was fast and could deal instant damage. In response, Yuki remembered the assassin player who had taken Wang Yi's weapon during their boss mission the day before. He immediately started searching for the player in the game. When he finally found the assassin player, the player keeps silent, seeming like an introvert. After tracking the account's IP address, Yuki discovered that the player worked at a coffee shop. Initially, they thought the assassin player was the coffee shop manager, but it turned out that he was an employee named Mo Fun, who had accidentally dropped a Glory Game account card. Besides that, Yuki and his friends noticed that Mo Fun appeared to be stressed while working as a barista at the coffee shop. The coffee shop manager was trying to steal money and unfairly blamed all the employees, including Mo Fun, when the coffee shop owner arrived. Because of that, Yuki decided to confront Mo Fun in the game and made him feel uncomfortable while playing Glory until Mo Fun was willing to talk. Yuki then confronted Mo Fun and attacked him in the game until Mo Fun was willing to talk. He instructed Mo Fun to come to Cyber Cafe Happy, and Mo Fun left immediately. When they arrived, Yuki thought that Mo Fun had agreed to join Team Happy. He introduced Mo Fun to the place, but it turned out that Mo Fun intended to steal Yuki's account card. Fortunately, Yuki had anticipated this and had baited Mo Fun with another account card. Yuki then challenged Mo Fun to a competition using the Mirad Manifestation Umbrella. If Mo Fun could defeat one of Team Happy's members with it, he would win the umbrella, and Yuki promised not to bother him again. But if Mo Fun lost, he would have to give up his account card. The team member chosen to face Mo Fun was the talkative player Wu Chen. Despite assassins usually having an advantage over warlocks, Mo Fun was using the Mirad Manifestation Umbrella which was only effective for non-class roles, essentially making it as good as having no weapon. In the end, Wu Chen defeated Mo Fun without much effort. Mo Fun had to surrender his account card, but his introverted self prevented him from speaking to Yu Qi. Later on, he ended up caught in the rain outside and was too scared to approach Yu Qi, who had taken his account card. Seeing this, Gu Gu advised Mo Fun to seek shelter and talk to him about the meaning and importance of friendship, reminding him of the times they had played, argued, and laughed together. The next morning, Mo Fun returned to Cyber Cafe happy to retrieve his account card. Known as the top thief in the Glory game, Mo Fun then shared secret maps with Team Happy to help them find skill books and improve their skills. After several late night gaming sessions, they managed to level up quickly. To celebrate, Team Happy went out to eat at a restaurant and coincidentally meet the coffee shop manager where Mo Fun worked. Meanwhile, Mo Fun was sitting alone, feeling left out. In response, Team Happy members decided to take action against the mistreatment Mo Fun had suffered from the coffee shop manager earlier. At that time, Little Tongue was tasked with luring the manager, while Bao Zi tried to get the woman the manager was dating to discover his affair with Little Tongue. At the same time, Wu Chen talked to the coffee shop owner about the manager's corrupt actions. Later on, Yi Feng are added chili powder to the manager's drink and disrupted his meeting with the coffee shop owner. Seeing this, Mo Fun felt like he was part of a protective and caring family. On their way home, Yuki returned Mo Fun's account card. After everything they had been through, Mo Fun returned to Cyber Cafe Happy and decided to join the team. A few days later, Team Happy had a match against Excellent Ara. Surprisingly, Sun Xian didn't start playing at the beginning of the game, forcing Team Happy to adjust their tactics. Shortly after, the match began with Team Happy attempting to trap the Excellent Ara team using their healer. They managed to corner Shi Qin in the middle of the map, but Shi Qin reacted quickly and escaped the encirclement. Realizing he was at a disadvantage, Shi Qin swiftly pulled back and Team Happy had been waiting for this moment. Their assassin, Mo Fun, 
had positioned himself along Shi Qin's escape route. However, Shi Qin noticed that only four of Team Happy's members were visible, so he used a drone to search for the missing member. When he located Mo Fun, it was already too late because Mo Fun was nearby. After a fierce battle, Shi Qin saw an opportunity to escape. He quickly flew away, and Yu Qi took up the chase. Unexpectedly, Mo Cheng was watching them and protecting Shi Qin from a distance. Then, Mo Fun continued to pursue Shi Qin but fell into an enemy trap. Shi Qin had strategically placed mines in advance, and all of Team Happy's members followed Mo Fun to help. At that moment, Mo Fun was participating in a team match for the first time, so he was very eager to defeat Shi Qin. However, his eagerness ended up disrupting the teamwork of the other team members. In the end, Shi Qin and Little Tung were defeated by Shi Qin. Seeing this opportunity, Sun Xiun decided to join the match. When Sun Xiun used his ultimate skill, Yu Qi prepared to defend against the attack. But Sun Xiun unexpectedly changed the direction of his attack, targeting Wang Yi and Yi Feng Ar, which led to their instant defeat. At that time, Yu Qi had to face all five opponents by himself. There, he intentionally lured his opponents toward Wu Chen, who had prepared skills for them. Wu Chen managed to trap four of them, except Sun Xiang, allowing Yu Qi to focus on defeating Sun Xiang, which he did at the last second. This victory earned Team Happy one point to qualify for the Challenger League, but they still felt sad because of their earlier defeat. Then Yu Qi advised them to take a date of rest. Later on, Gu Gu asked all team members to write down their complaints about anything or anyone on a piece of paper, with the promise of punishment for those named in the complaints. Surprisingly, everyone wrote their own names except for Mo Fun, who didn't write anything on his paper. This made Mo Fun regret his actions even more. However, the other team members insisted on taking the blame themselves, and they were all punished by Gu Gu to find skill books with the assistance of Mo Fun and Wu Chen, and then sell the valuable items they get. After a few weeks passed, Mo Fun still had the lowest performance record among the team members. Seeing this, the others helped Mo Fun by evaluating his training methods and teaching him how to position himself in the game to maximize the damage dealt by the team. To help Mo Fun better understand positioning, they played another game he was familiar with, basketball. Finally, Mo Fun understand the concept of positioning and put more effort into teamwork. On the other hand, Yu Qi, who was about to enter the Challenger League, started reminiscing about his early days in the league and his grandfather, Yu Bai. He wore a mask during competitions because his father, Yu Wang, didn't support his esports career, but Yu Bai was his biggest supporter. When Yu Qi left home, he didn't return until Yu Bai passed away. Now Yu Qi decided to go back home and meet his father. He explained to his father that he had no regrets about his life choices. He also shared that he and his new team would compete in the Challenger League and hoped that Yu Wang would attend the matches. A few days later, Team Happy was getting ready for their first match against Team Mysterious Fantasy. This opponent had been around for a long time, but always found themselves in the Challenger League instead of the top tier. The twist was that Happy had to play this match on Mysterious Fantasy's home turf, so there were no fans to cheer for them. Unexpectedly, Meng Mian showed up to support them. On the other hand, Gu Gu got really nervous before the official match and accidentally filled out the registration form incorrectly. She meant to enter Wu Chen, but instead, she registered Yi Feng Ar, who was a support player for the one-on-one -on -one match. When the match began, Yi Feng Ar was very nervous as it was his first official competition. However, he remembered the tips he had learned from Yu Qi, which helped him exploit the weaknesses of her opponent. Unfortunately, Yi Feng Ar still ended up losing the match. In the second match, Bao Zi faced off against a mage player. At first, Bao Zi seemed confident, but following Yu Qi's advice to hide, he ended up just wandering around in circles and got lost. By the time the match ended, Baozi had no choice but to surrender as he was constantly attacked by his opponent. In the third match, it was Yuki's turn to play, and when he stepped forward, he spotted his father in the stands. This was an important moment because, for the first time in an official match, Yuki removed his mask. As the match began, Yuki faced off against a marksman or archer player, 
he swiftly executed a combo skill, not giving his opponent a chance to counter. Eventually, he come out the winner in the match. This win filled Yu Wang with pride, especially after learning from Meng Mian that Yu Qi served as an inspiration for the glory game. In the following match, both teams entered the last man standing round, where players continue to compete until their in-game cell phone runs out. Wu Chen faced off against players who were also warlocks or mages. Wu Chen's opponent had been cautioned by their captain not to fight with Wu Chen during the match. When the match started, Wu Chen had a deep understanding of the range of all the skills of his opponent's character class, allowing him to maintain a precise distance between them. Besides that, Wu Chen's weapon had a longer reach than his opponent's. This time, Wu Chen easily secured a victory. In the next match, Wu Chen faced a player who was a sword expert. As usual, he was talkative during the match. However, he was up against a master of the sword, and he lost with a single strike. Afterward, Lu Ji stepped in to replace Wu Chen, but was defeated with one attack. And the last team member to step up was Little Tongue. This time, the match was intense, but ultimately Little Tongue managed to secure a win, even though her in-game health, HP, had dropped by up to 30%. In the final round, Little Tongue faced off against the enemy's deputy captain. Unfortunately, her HP was low, so she became more cautious and refrained from attacking aggressively as she normally would. Instead, Little Tongue focused on dodging and defending until she eventually lost this match. At that time, Yuki quickly encouraged Little Tongue, telling her not to give up and to stay focused. The next match was a team battle. At first, Team Happy faced heavy pressure from the enemy's attacks, causing their defensive formation to break. However, this had been Yuki's plan all along. They intentionally deceived the enemy into engaging in individual battles during a team match because Team Happy consisted mainly of close comeback characters. In the middle through the fight, Mo Fun shows up and swiftly eliminated the opposing captain. With this advantage, the members of Team Happy supported one another and took down the remaining opponents one by one. In the end, they win their first victory with a score of 6-5. After the game ended, Yu Qi wanted to see his dad. But when he looked, Yu Wang was gone, and he had left the key with Main Ming to give to Yu Qi. This showed that Yu Wang supported Yu Qi now, and he could go home whenever he wanted. When they got back to the Cyber Cafe Happy, fans of Excellent Ara started attacking Team Happy on social media. They thought Yuki had betrayed Excellent Ara. Even when Team Happy was hanging out, they were still being bothered by Excellent Ara fans. At that time, Yuki wanted to make it clear that they played glory for themselves, not just to please the fans. He also wanted to emphasize that they were true esports athletes, not entertainers whose job is to entertain fans. Later on, Yuki talked to his teammates about why they played Glory. He wanted them to really understand the reasons behind it because it would affect how long and how well they could play. He also told his teammates not to pay attention to what the haters were saying. A few months later, both Team Happy and Team Excellent Ara had won six matches in a row. In their next match, Team Happy was going up against Team Everlasting. During the match, Bao Zi got shot from a very long distance by the enemy captain. At that time, Mu Ching noticed that the weapon the enemy captain used didn't make sense because the target was too far away. On the other side, Little Tung and Xiao Fang were under attack by four other players. They decided to lead their opponents to Wu Chen so that he could trap them all. Meanwhile, Yu Qi found the enemy captain's location. Just when the enemy captain was about to be cornered, the game server suddenly crashed. It turned out that Team Everlasting had played unfairly by sharing Bao Zi's location with their captain and then shutting down the server when they were in trouble. Despite this dirty play, Team Happy still managed to win the match. As for the Everlasting team's captain, Hu Chung, he remembered something that happened before the match. Their manager had warned them that if they lost this time, the investors would pull out their money. So, even though he had to cheat, Hu Chung tried to win the match but ended up losing. After losing, Hu Chung met Yu Qi and sold all of Everlasting's equipment. When Yu Qi knew about Hu Chung's situation, he invited Hu Chung to join Team Happy. After some discussions, Hu Chung decided to join Team Happy. In their next match, 
Team Happy went up against Jade Dynasty. During the preparations, Mu Chen accidentally saw Hu Chun talking to the captain of the Jade Dynasty team, which made Wu Chen worry that Hu Chun might betray them. Right before the match was about to start, league officials called Yu Qi, accusing him of using a fake identity. Yu Qi had been using his twin brother's name, Yu Xiao, all along. So, Yu Qi handed over this match to Wu Chen, who had the most experience. Wu Chen's group was suspicious of Hu Chun, so they asked Wu Gu to replace him with Yi Feng are in this match. Yi Feng are turned out to be playing a supporting role, but because he had been an assassin player on the Tiny Herbs team for many years, he was really skilled at sneaking around. Then he demonstrated rapid progress from his training, and strategically waited on a wall for the right moment to surprise his opponent with lightning fast moves. He managed to lock up his enemies and use all his skills at once, securing a victory in the match. In Bao Zi's second match, he faced a skilled swordmaster from Jade Dynasty. Bao Zi, who had been training hard, managed to defeat his opponent, who was just as experienced as Wu Chen, by using a special skill that allowed him to copy his opponent's abilities. In the third match, it was Mo Fun's turn to play. Wu Chen told Mo Fun to buy some time because Yu Qi hadn't returned yet. Mo Fun decided to hide and didn't attack, even though there were opportunities. Sadly, Mo Fun ended up getting a yellow card for being too passive for too long. With no other choice, he had to attack openly, and he ended up losing the match. Meanwhile, Yu Qi was waiting for the league's decision while trying to make compromises with the captains of the big teams. Back in the competition, it was Little Tung's turn to play. She confidently promised to defeat three opponents in an arena match and said she would retire if she lost. At that time, Little Tung faced off against an assassin player, and her skills had improved significantly. Unfortunately, her opponent trapped her and was willing to sacrifice himself to defeat Little Tung. In the end, she couldn't keep her promise, and she felt devastated because of it. In the next match, Team Happy had no more players left except for Hu Chung, who was suspected of betraying them. So, Wu Chen asked Gu Gu to step in, but she didn't know what to do and lost quickly. The last player from Team Happy was Wu Chen, and he had to defeat two opponents. However, Wu Chen's opponent kept using the same skill repeatedly and seemed willing to lose the match. Surprisingly, the enemy's real goal was to make Wu Chen dodge the skill, which would risk injuring his wrist. In the final match, the enemy continued to use the same skill, causing Wu Chen's right hand to shake, and his movements slowed down. Eventually, he couldn't avoid his opponent's attack, and he lost. Meanwhile, the head of the league, Feta Roshan, who was discussing Yu Qi's case, informed the team captains that they were considering banning Yu Qi from official competitions. However, the captains of the big teams argued that Yu Qi had introduced many new strategies and tactics to the game, serving as a rival and role model for teams like theirs. They believed that if the Feeder Roshan banned Yu Qi from competing, it would block the development of the glory game and make the league competition less competitive. Back to the competition, Wu Chen again requested that Gu Go not replace Wu Chun. In reality, Hu Chun was not allowed to attend the meeting. However, Wu Chen didn't provide a clear explanation that didn't involve Hu Chun, which led to objections from other team members and weakened their unity. There, Gu Gu confirmed that they would follow Wu Chen's orders as the person entrusted with authority while Yu Qi was away. They also kept Yu Qi as a backup, and Hu Chun accepted the decision happily. When the match began, they purposely played defensively to buy time and wait for Yu Qi. But when the enemy spotted them, they had no choice but to defend themselves. At that point, Little Tongue was still focused on fighting three enemies all by herself, while Wu Chen's wrist had already been injured, causing his accuracy to drop significantly, and he often missed his attacks. Turns out both teams had the same strategy, which was to target the opposing team's healer player. When Wu Chen aimed at the enemy chasing Wang Yi, his attack missed and hit a building, causing it to collapse and hit Wang Yi. Meanwhile, Little Tongue also lost because of her own overconfidence. This led to a significant change in Team Happy work, making it less effective. Meanwhile, at the league office, the staff had listened to the big team captain's reasons, and they eventually decided to allow Yu Qi to play but under a new identity. 
This meant that all of his achievements with Excellent Ara would be erased, which would be a problem for Excellent Ara. Soon after, Yuki quickly got in touch with Mu Cheng to bring her to the competition arena. When he arrived at the arena, Mu Chen had already been defeated, and only Yuki, Bao Zi, and Yi Feng are were left to face six opponents. When Yuki and his team realized they were outnumbered, he came up with a plan to trap the enemies on the edge of a cliff. Bao Zi quickly caused the cliff's edge to collapse, bringing down all the enemies chasing them. Meanwhile, Yuki used his weapon skills to climb back up. However, one of the opponents caught him and tried to damage his Mered Manifestation Umbrella, causing it to start smoking. In the end, Yi Feng are jumped to catch the opponent who had Yuki in their grip, and both Yi Feng are and the opponent fell off the cliff. In the final match, Yuki had to face a skilled sword expert. The battle was intense, but Yuki pushed his weapon to its limits, causing it to break in the middle of the match. Unfortunately, Yuki and Team Happy had to accept defeat in that match. It was a significant setback for both the team and Yuki personally, as the weapon had been made by their childhood friend, Mukyu. This weapon was unique and not a standard one. Yuki also realized that repairing the weapon would be very challenging and time-consuming. When they returned to their dormitory, Team Happy felt hopeless and considered giving up. Meanwhile, Yuki went home and reflected on the memories of when he first played the glory game with Mu Cheng and Mu Qiu. He remembered how upset Mu Qiu had been when his belongings were damaged. In the past, Yuki managed to buy a cool arcade motorbike game with the money he won in a score guessing competition. Then he played the game with his friend Mu Qiu. Now in the present, Muching accidentally saw Yuki playing the arcade motorbike game all by himself. This made her feel sad because it reminded her of her older brother, Mukyu. Meanwhile, in the dormitory of the Team Happy, the members felt like their team was falling apart because they lost their last match. Wu Chen finally said that Hu Chung had shared their team's information with their opponents, but Little Tong and Wang Yi even blamed Wu Chen for not being as good as Yu Qi in leading the team as captain. In the end, all the team members started blaming each other until they decided to disband the team. Yu Qi, who had been listening to their arguments from outside, finally entered the room. He gave each member the choice to decide for themselves whether they wanted to keep fighting or give up. A little while later, Wu Chen decided to go back home and play the glory game with his married friends. However, his friends had busy lives, so one by one, they left because they had things to take care of. Meanwhile, Little Tongue made the choice to leave Cyber Cage happy and go back to music school. She also met her teacher and told them that she wouldn't be coming back. As for Wu Chen, he felt a bit lost and didn't know what to do next. Eventually, he decided to sell his Glory Game account that he had been taking care of for a long time. Just as he was about to sign the paperwork for the sale, Bao Zi suddenly showed up and saw what Wu Chen was doing. Bao Zi quickly grabbed the pen and threw it away to prevent Wu Chen from signing the account transfer papers. This made Wu Chen really mad, and he kicked Bao Zi out. There, they had an argument, with Wu Chen saying that Diz was too old to play in the professional league, and his hand condition wasn't as good as it used to be. But Bao Zi explained that everyone would eventually retire, but not in a state of defeat. Despite the argument, Wu Chen went back to his house to continue with the sale. On the other hand, Mo Fun had already left the coffee shop, so he didn't have any other place to go. He was waiting at a cafe, hoping that his friends from Team Happy would return. While he was waiting, he bumped into Munching, and she told him she was confident that Team Happy would come back. Later, Munching went to Cyber Cafe Happy to meet Yuki, who also seemed really worried. Yuki admitted that he had been trying to fix his weapon, but it didn't feel the same as before. It was the first time he looked like he might give up on something in his life. Then Munching gave Mu Qiu a lucky coin and explained that Mu Qiu used it to decide whether they should stay together or if Mu Qing would be adopted by another family. Unexpectedly, Yu Qi passed by just when Mu Qiu tossed the coin, and that moment changed both of their lives. Munching also stressed that Yu Qi was the most beautiful thing in their lives, and because of that incident, they became friends and are still friends today. At that itmum, Munching also hopes that Yuki won't give up 
and will keep working on improving the Mirad Manifestation Umbrella Weapon that Mu Q made. As the leader of the Team Happy, Yuki explained that winning and losing in games is normal, but the most important thing is to never give up in life. He also added that playing the glory game is just one of the choices in life, and there are many other choices worth fighting for. Surprisingly, one by one, the members of the Team Happy arrived and quickly took their places on stage. Eventually, they all decided to compete in the finals and then gathered at the team's house. While they were sitting around the dining table, Mu Chen mentioned that he didn't sell his game account because Bao Zi suddenly showed up and tore up the sales contract. They all shared where they had been the day before. Afterward, they planned to help Yu Qi repair his damaged weapon from the previous match. When they took apart the Mirad Manifestation Umbrella to figure out what was wrong, Yu Qi suddenly got a clue from Mu Qi's shadow. He realized that the problematic part was the stick or the base. Once Yu Qi figured this out, he immediately informed his team, and they all split up to find the materials needed to repair his weapon. On the other hand, Shi Qin was having a meeting with the excellent Ara team and shared some news. He said that the Glory game had added five new levels, which meant that all players needed to complete missions and train to reach the highest level, going from level 70 to 75. During the meeting, Shi Qin introduced a new team member named Hu Fei, who had just been promoted from Team B. Interestingly, Hu Fei used to be Yu Qi's student back when Yu Qi was still in excellent era. However, Hu Fei had some attitude issues, which led to him studying abroad during his time at excellent era. Now, Qiu Fei has returned to excellent era in search of Yu Qi, but Yu Qi has already left to form a new team. It turns out that Qiu Fei's abilities and attitude are similar to Sun Xiang's. So, Qi Qin intentionally recommended that the two of them train together as the main players for the excellent Ara team. Meanwhile, over at the Team Happy, they have been busy completing missions and achieving high scores. They were determined to obtain the final material needed to upgrade the Mirad Manifestation Umbrella, which was the blue-white crystals. Unfortunately, the excellent Ara team had already got this item by setting a new record for mission completion. Then Team Happy had to come up with another plan to get these materials, such as repeatedly completing normal missions. Not long after, Gu Gu informed the Team Happy that all the guild members and fans had come together to help complete a mission and get a very rare blue-white crystal. Thanks to everyone's help, Gu Gu finally got the last piece of the blue-white crystal material needed to make the Mirad Manifestation Umbrella perfect. While the Team Happy was getting ready for profile photos, they received surprising news from Glory officials. The rules for the final match had changed, and now it would use a point system instead of individual rounds. Each team would earn two points for every opponent they defeated. On the other hand, Muching was called by manager Tao to discuss extending her contract for three more years and receiving personal training from their mentor. However, Muching turned down the offer. At that time, Tao suspected that Muching might be thinking about joining the team happy, and because of this, he also prevented her from participating in the final match. He was worried that she might deliberately lose to help the team happy win. Muching explained that she's a professional player, and as long as she's with the excellent Ara team, she'll always give her best for that team. Three hours before the final match, both teams were still working on their strategies to win. Later, the excellent Ara team arrived at the match hall, and reporters who knew that Muching was expecting questioned her with uncomfortable questions. Meanwhile, on the team happy, Little Tongue, who had said she would retire if she lost her last match, was also asked about her promise. There, she apologized for her arrogance the day before and promised to keep playing, even if it meant breaking her word. As they walked toward the match area, Yuki reminded his team members of their roles and the strategy they plan to use. Inside the arena, veteran glory players watched the final match from the spectator seats. Meanwhile, Wen Shu and Shofun were chosen as the commentators for the final match. Finally, the match began, and the host explained the new rules for this final match. There were only two rounds, and they were the arena round and the team round. Both teams would have six players in each round, and the score would be based on how many enemies they managed to defeat. 
When the match began, Team Happy chose Little Tongue to be their first player, and he was going to face Shi Qin. This surprised Team Happy because they had expected Sun Xiang to be the one to take the spotlight and make decisions. The excellent Ara team pointed out that Sun Xiang had started to control his ego and prioritize the team's well-being. Even though Little Tongue had much faster hand movements, known as APM, action per minute, than Shi Qin, he still found it challenging to compete with Shi Qin due to the vast difference in experience. In the end, Little Tongue lost, leaving Shi Qin with 70% of his health points. After the match, Yu Qi and Gu Gu comforted Little Tongue, explaining that Shi Qin was a formidable opponent and one of the tactical masters. The next player to face Shi Qin was Mo Fun, who also struggled against Shi Qin because he had difficulty getting close and using his skills effectively. Mo Fun lost because he couldn't manage his skills properly. This allowed Shi Qin to earn four points by defeating two players from the team Happy. The next player to step up against Shi Qin was Yi Feng Ar. At that time, Yi Feng Ar had an impressive start to the match, showing that he had reached a higher level of skill. He even managed to lead Shi Qin into a trap, making it difficult for him to handle the situation. Unfortunately, right when Shi Qin was about to lose, he cleverly tricked Yi Feng are into falling into a trap that had been set up earlier. As a result, both players ended up defeated, and the match ended in a draw. In the following match, it was Yu Qi facing off against his former student, Hu Fei. Although at first Hu Fei had a strong start and dominated the match, Yu Qi suddenly vanished and caught Hu Fei off guard with a combo attack that left him unable to move. This highlighted the clear difference in skill between the mentor and the student as Yu Qi easily defeated Qiu Fei. Next up was Sun Xiong's turn to compete against Yu Qi. However, before they faced off, Yu Qi shamelessly restored his health points to 70%. Once their HP was equal, they met in the middle of the arena map. At that time, Sun Xiong showed some new skills after leveling up, and his abilities had greatly improved. Yu Qi wasn't aware of the hard work Sun Xiong had put into preparing for this match. However, when Sun Xiang became overconfident while in a favorable position, Yu Qi counter attacked and left him with only 10% of his health points remaining. During a match, Yu Qi intentionally allowed Sun Xiang to study his own former account from Excellent Era, which Sun Xiang was now using. When Yu Qi figured out how Sun Xiang played the game, he turned things around. Sun Xiang used his powerful ultimate skill, rotating it 180 degrees, which impressed everyone in the audience. However, they were all surprised when Yu Qi emerged as the winner. Upon reviewing the match, it turned out that Yu Qi had cleverly used Sun Xiang's own ultimate skill to close the distance. When Sun Xiang was controlling his ultimate skill, he was in a vulnerable position and couldn't defend or dodge attacks. In the end, Yu Qi won the match dramatically, with only 0.03% of her health points left. After the match, Sun Xian gracefully accepted his defeat and appeared more mature. In the next match, Yu Qi decided to give up because his health points were running dangerously low. Then he was replaced by Wu Chen to face Gorilla from Excellent Ara. During the match, Wu Chen's hand injury started acting up again, causing some disruptions in his gameplay. Yu Qi, who had suspicions about Wu Chen's condition, then asked Bao Zi about Wu Chen's hand. At first, Bao Zi tried to keep Wu Chen's hand injury a secret. However, he eventually told Yu Qi, explaining that Wu Chen had taken painkillers before the match because it might be his last game, and he was determined to fight until the end. Wu Chen ultimately won this match, setting up a showdown with Muching in the next round. At that time, Mu Ching was under pressure from Tao to ensure excellent Ara's victory. If she lost this match, she would face accusations of intentionally losing, and her professionalism would be questioned. Hearing that, Shi Qin disagreed with Tao's decision, but Tao didn't pay attention to his opinion. Once the match began, Mu Ching tried to find a good spot to locate Wu Chen's position. She wanted to end the match swiftly. After finding a good spot, Muching launched the attack. With a broad attack range, Muching continuously pushed Wu Chen into a corner, ultimately defeating him without him being able to move. However, Muching felt disappointed by Tao's actions, 
leading her to decide that this would be her final match for the excellent Ara team. Then, she switched over to Team Happy. In the end, the arena round ended with Team Excellent Ara holding a five-point lead over Team Happy. The next round was the team round, a showdown between Shichin and Yuki. Even before reaching the finals, they had devised a formation they believed could outperform the opposing team. In the beginning of the match, Yuki did something clever. He fired his weapon into the air to distract the excellent Ara team. This made the excellent Ara team split into two groups. Soon Xiong and Qiu Fei were assigned to catch Yuki. While this was happening, Yuki skillfully avoided Sun Xiong and Qiu Fei's attacks, waiting for the right moment to strike. Even though Yuki was having a tough time dealing with Sun Xiong and Qiu Fei, he understood their playing style well. So he purposely messed up their teamwork to break their Cooper Roshan. On the other hand, Yi Fangar, Bao Zi, and Little Tung were chasing Shi Qin, but fell into a trap set by Shi Qin. They got surrounded by other excellent Ara players. Meanwhile, Yuki was struggling to handle two opponents at once. Surprisingly, the secret strategist of the Team Happy turned out to be Hu Chung. Then, when he found the right position, Hu Chung launched long-range attacks to help Yuki escape. He also supported Yi Feng R and the others with his long-range attacks. There, they took advantage of the situation to launch a counter rot attack and successfully eliminated one player from the excellent Ara team. The excellent Ara team quickly changed their backup player, but Hu Chung, who was close to where the changing player was entering, stopped them from joining their team. Hu Chung had no other option but to engage in close combat with this player. At that moment, the excellent Ara team was having a tough time because the team happy kept pressuring them, causing their planned formation to break apart. Meanwhile, Team Happy continued to pursue Shi Qin, who was with a healer player in critical condition. On the other hand, Hu Chung didn't want to miss the opportunity and kept launching close-range attacks, even though it was risky and harmful to himself. Eventually, Hu Chung defeated the reserve player, even though he lost his own character in the process. After Hu Chung's character died, Wen Yi, the reserve player for the Team Happy, entered the arena. Meanwhile, Yu Qi managed to escape from Sun Xiong and Qiu Fei and succeeded in eliminating the enemy team's healer player. After that, Yu Qi immediately went after Shi Qin. Shi Qin, who was trapped with low health, decided to perform a Despair Rot move, causing an explosion. This resulted in Yi Feng R and Bao Zi getting hit by the explosion, while Little Tung was protected by Yu Qi, who arrived just in time. And this completely turned the game around. Soon after, Sun Xiong and Qiu Fei came to their location and immediately attacked Yu Qi and Little Tung. There, Yu Qi looked really worried because he had to fight them while also trying to heal Little Tung. However, in the middle of the battle, Wen Yi, the healer for the Team Happy, arrived and quickly helped heal Little Tung. In the end, Little Tung managed to defeat Qiu Fei, but Qiu Fei dealt so much damage that Little Tung fell at the same time as Wen Yi. Even when Excellent Ara was still ahead by five points, securing their victory in terms of score, in the final showdown, Yu Qi faced off against Sun Xiong. But despite Team Happy knew they would lose based on the total points, Yu Qi didn't want to give up and still challenged Sun Xiong. They had an intense close range fight, and in the end, Yu Qi proved to be the better duelist against Sun Xiong for the second time. While Team Happy had won in the team competition, they still lost in total points. They looked very disappointed because the difference between the two teams was just one point, with Excellent Ara having 44 points and Happy having 43 points. Surprisingly, the points on the main screen changed to 45 for Team Happy and 44 for Team Excellent Ara. This happened because Yuki set a new record for the highest damage output, surpassing Wong King's record that had stood unbroken for four years. This earned the team happy two additional points, making them the champions. On the other hand, Tao believed that Sun Xiong was responsible for the team's loss. After an exciting and intense journey, Team Happy emerged as the champions of the Challenger League. They earned a certificate to enter the professional league, along with prize money and trophies. To celebrate their victory, they had a party at a club in the evening. The following day, Team Happy officially announced their decision to join the professional league.
Meanwhile, Meng Myung and other journalists interviewed the leaders of various professional teams to gather their thoughts on Team Happy. Later on, news broke that excellent ARA team had gone bankrupt, and its members were expected to disband and join other teams. Soon after, Yu Qi accompanied Muching to collect her belongings from the excellent Ara office. While there, they ran into Tao, who was playing Glory. At that time, Yu Qi and Tao reminisced about their past and realized that they could have been a great team together. However, Yu Qi believed that it was all in the past. Then, Tao entrusted Mu Qiu's account card to Yu Qi. In the end, Team Happy received news that Sun Xiang had been recruited by one of the Pro League teams making their potential rivalry in the Pro League even more intense. The series ends. The moral lesson from this series is if you want to be a famous eSport player, just wear a mask, be mysterious, invite people to join your team, and win the game.